So now I, as a proud alum of Central Washington University, not only have the privilege of introducing Jim Walpart, I also have the privilege of serving on the Central Washington University Board of Trustees. And I can tell you what a great team that we have in Central Washington and what a great addition and leadership um, that Jim brings to his role as the 15th Central Washington University president. Uh, over the years, we have seen, and all of us who are alum or have family members there, we know that Central has a history and legacy of committing to enriching the lives of young people in our state. Central has always provided a crucial bridge to higher education for first-generation college students and underserved populations. The university strengthened that commitment last summer when we welcomed Dr. Jim Wolpart. Dr. Wolpart has spent his entire higher education career first at the Florida Gulf Coast University and then at the University of Northern Iowa, promoting the value of a diverse, inclusive campus atmosphere where all students and employees can thrive. He believes in the power of shared governance and the democratic process. He insists that everyone on campus and everyone in the community has an opportunity to use their voice to affect change. Above all, Dr. Wolpart subscribes to the ethos of deep care. That makes everyone he encounters feel valued. He and his wife, Sasha, are actively engaged in the Central Washington University and Ellensburg communities. They both love the outdoors, and on their free time, and I say that jokingly because I know there's not much of it, but on their weekends, they're out searching for hiking trails and ski slopes in the Northwest, and we know there's a lot of those. So next year, hopefully he and his wife will join us for the Rotary Snow Day and Ski White Pass. The Wolparts are also proud dog lovers and talk about Annabelle and Leopold as if they're their children. And I've got a chance to meet these two dogs. When we have dinner in the university house, they're always so curious about who we are. So I love dogs myself. They also share a strong commitment to sustainability and caring for the environment, which has become one of the centerpieces of his administration. When Dr. Wolpart isn't spending time outdoors, he enjoys reading, cooking, walking around town, and interacting with new people. And I can attest to the reading because we have a lot of that on the board. And I enjoy it. There is surely more that I can say about Dr. Wolpart. He really has been a joy to work with and just so excited to welcome him and his strong leadership to Central Washington. But I'm going to leave it up to him to share the rest. And without further ado, please help me welcome our 15th CWU President, Dr. Jim Wolpart. Good afternoon. It is such a pleasure and an honor to be here with you today in front of an organization that understands that service is the highest form of leadership. And thank you, Aaron, for that very generous introduction. Uh, Aaron is actually one of Central's most senior trustees, so she has a great deal of knowledge and wisdom that she brings to us. And most of you know that one of your other members, Jeff Charbonneau, who is the principal of Zilla High School, is our newest board member. He could not be with us today. Uh, I also want to thank public our Office of Public Affairs. Cremere is here. Lauren is in the back. Rick uh, and others who have done a fantastic job of setting everything up today. There's lots of goodies on your table. We hope you'll take those away and display them. And also thank you to our students, the Jazz Quartet. You can never tell that they're students whenever they perform. It's just remarkable. So thank you all also for being here. All right, so one more question about March Madness. The only 15th seed to ever make it to the Sweet 16. Yeah, if you don't know the answer, you have to give a dollar. Uh, that a boy. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So I had the pleasure and honor of starting my career after I finished my PhD at the University of T Tennessee at Florida Gulf Coast University, uh, which was a brand new university opened in 1997 with 2,500 students. When I left in 2015, it had 14,500 students. I was hired in 1994, three years before the university opened, to write the curriculum, hire the faculty, and get everything going. When we had something that came up, we said, whoa, how do we do that? What's the policy? What's the procedure? We took out a yellow pad and started creating it. It was literally a university from scratch. In 2013, they were Dunk City. Does anybody remember that? 
They beat Georgetown, I think, in the first round, and then San Diego State in the second round and made it to the Sweet 16. A fantastic run. And it was all because of the dean at, at the university at the time. That was me. <laughs> What a remarkable opportunity that was. I was there for 21 years, really learning so much about higher education, about access, about affordability, about student engagement and success. And went after that to a place that also is in the Midwest, that is a fantastic comprehensive university, the University of Northern Iowa, and was there for six years as provost and vice president for academic affairs, had one year as a stint as interim president. When I started looking around and thinking, I have gifts and talents to offer to the world, and I wanted to find a place where those gifts and talents and values lined up, there was only one place that I was truly interested in, only one place that I applied, and that was Central Washington University, because it is a special place. I've been here now for 10 months, and I've done a lot of listening during that time. To students, I spend as much time as I can with our students, to alumni, to supporters, to community members, to community leaders, to business owners, and I keep hearing the same thing over and over again. Central Washington University is a special place because it transforms the lives of our students, of their families, and of their communities. I've heard lots of stories from our alum of one faculty member or one staff member who took an interest in their life and in their journey, saw something deep and purposeful in them that they didn't know that they had, and then helped them reach that potential and go off in the world and do remarkable things. This happens because of what happens inside the classroom. We have phenomenal faculty who teach our classes, not a whole host of TAs and not big classes, but small classes where the faculty get to know the students' names and the staff who care deeply about our students. And very often, we'll spend time with them to help them on their journey, knowing where they're headed. What's critical is that it's not just what happens inside the classroom that is important, but it's the experiences that students get outside the classroom. Solving real world problems in real world settings. That's what every employer is asking us for. If a student comes to us, employers say, just having sat in a classroom, they won't be ready for work. But if they take that learning inside the classroom and they apply it outside, solving problems, they'll be ready on day one. We do that at a very high level. Let me say that we trace our success to the people. It's always the people. This is what makes the place special. The faculty are passionate about their disciplines, but most importantly, and even though they do very high levels of research, Many of them do research that would qualify them to be at the University of Washington or Washington State. They stay at Central because they love teaching so much and interacting with students. That's how we're different. And the students are wonderful. They're kind, they're curious, they're determined. They've been described as hardworking and tenacious, balanced with humility and being down to earth. And they're a treasure. Many of them come from this county. More than a thousand in our last year in 2019. Nearly 200 transferred uh, to Central from Yakima Valley College to finish their degree. So we have a fantastic relationship with Yakima Valley College. And we have nearly 10,000 Wildcats in the county. We are very proud of our background as a normal school. We opened in 1891 as a normal school, and we have developed our footprint in this area. Our mission in 1891 was to produce teachers for the growing state of Washington. The state constitution called the education of our children a paramount duty. We started centers, actually, in the early part of 20th century. Many people don't necessarily remember that. We actually had a center down here in Yakima that helped our student teachers get connected to the K-12 system and do student teaching. We are now a public comprehensive university that is a partner with communities around the state, but especially this community. This is our closest tie. Over just the last five years, we have sent 200 school teachers to the Yakima Valley. In a typical year, Central pays more than $4 million in wages to employees who live in this area, and $3.3 million to local businesses for everything from carpeting to cars. 
Central faculty, staff, and students are involved in the community as well. And a great example with our music, our music faculty and students sit on the Yakima Symphony Orchestra. And Central's college and the high school program allow students in 120 school districts across the state, not just here in Central Washington, but across the state, to start earning college credits while finishing high school. In fact, we are the largest supplier of courses to our high schools um, of, the, of the public universities. Those include hundreds of students every year from Yakima, Sela, Grandview, Sunnyside, Zilla, and West Valley. And we're working very diligently to elevate our relationship with these schools. We just started a guaranteed admissions program. If a student in any of the high schools has a 3.0 and has completed certain courses, we automatically admit them and we reach out and tell them, you have a place at Central Washington University. The applied learning that I talked about that is so critical to our business uh, partners when, when our students get internships and jobs is really uh, an important part of what we do that is distinct and different because it is our undergraduate students working with our full-time faculty. And they do a lot of applied research around the entire state, giving students the opportunity for that hands-on problem-solving activity that's critical for both their personal and their professional development. Some examples. When you drive over I-90 over the pass, you see that big wildlife corridor, the, the overpass that goes over there. We do research with our faculty and our students on that wildlife corridor and the success of that corridor. It is the largest scale study of this kind anywhere in the United States, run by our students and our faculty. We have faculty and students who partner with Scripps, UC Berkeley, California Institute of Technology to track and even anticipate West Coast earthquakes and tsunamis here at Central. We're involved in monitoring Yakima Nation riparian restoration zones. With the support of a grant from the National Science Foundation, we have faculty helping future teachers broaden their skills in science education in rural settings. We're working with a tech startup right now. This is a really cool project. We have a group of four students who are developing a cross-platform software solution to find charging stations for non-Tesla vehicles. If you have a Tesla, there's lots of charging stations across the United States. If you drive the new Ford Mach-E, Ford Mustang Mach-E, there's not as many charging stations. So we have a group of four students working on a project to figure out how to get those cars charged. And we have faculty and students creating comprehensive economic development strategies for regional counties. I'm going to pause for a minute and focus a lot on what's happening in our College of Business because there's lots of partnerships between our College of Business and what's happening here in the Valley. And I appreciate the fact that our College of Business faculty are here and many of their partners because the programs I'm going to talk about have really been developed in partnership with the businesses here in the Valley. First thing I'll talk about is a new agribusiness certificate. Um, this is brilliant. This is how Central Washington University is in a category by itself. We think differently and provide opportunities that other people haven't thought about. So we know that there are other big universities in the state, we won't name them, that can tell you how to grow things or offer ag econ programs that study the allocation, distribution, and utilization of commodities and resources. But business leaders have been saying they want something different and more. They need practical business education for the ag industry, how to balance the books, how to use IT in ag. How can we develop specific ag-related uh, marketing and supply chain management knowledge and skills? And so we've built, I love saying this as president, we've built, I didn't do anything, it was the College of Business, <laughs> a set of stackable credentials that will meet these different needs that will lead to a degree eventually. But folks can just join and take one of the credentials if they'd like. They can stack their credentials on top of it. It's meant for folks out in the business world, people who already have degrees who need to develop more skills, or for our own students. What these business leaders and businesses have told us is that um, they really want a way for the folks who have been working for them for years to develop these new skills and help them go to that next level. So we're launching this new program this fall, starting with a certificate in marketing, that's the first. We'll add IT next on top of that, and then we'll slowly grow that so it'll be its own uh, full degree option. 
one certificate at a time. And our accounting program is active here in, uh, in the Valley. We will start offering with Yakima Valley College this fall on their campus a bachelor's degree in, in accounting so that folks who are here can get a Central Washington the last two years and finish their accounting degree without having to drive up to Ellensburg. We will offer it through a hybrid schedule, which will include a combination of in-person classes. I think they will meet on Wednesday evenings, one night a week. And then the rest of the classes will be online. The program has been created to meet the needs of diverse communities and the needs of employers. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting in accounting is that the, the labor market is so incredibly tight for our accounting majors. They'll do an interview and very often get an offer as they're driving home. That's how tight the market is, and that's how good our accounting program is. Our accounting majors get snatched up. We just have to make sure that we get them all the way to the graduation line, because sometimes they're hired before they have graduated. <laughs> Those students who have completed their associate's degree at Yakima Valley College will be able to finish an ag, uh, a, a degree with us in accounting in just two years without having to do a lot of driving. So, uh, Han Donker is here. Han, if you'd raise your hand, he's the chair of the accounting department. If, if you want to talk to Han about this program, he's here. In addition to a lot of work with our curriculum and meeting the needs of employers, we've also been working on our campus and renovating and building facilities. If you haven't been there for a while, I would encourage you to get up to our campus. It's uh, one of the most beautiful campuses I've been on. Over the past 10 years, we've invested about a half a billion dollars in our academic and our residential facilities, and the results really are breathtaking. Uh, just today, as I left campus, they were taking down the fence and putting down the sod around our new health sciences building, which will have classes starting in the spring quarter on Tuesday. The building is state-of-the-art. We've had a couple of different tours. The, the, uh, the equipment that's in this building is just phenomenal. Uh, it will house exercise science, clinical physiology, biomechanics, nutrition, paramedicine, and public health programs. This was a $60 million project that we've been working on over the last couple of years. And we have just recently broken ground on our health education facilities and Nicholson Pavilion. If you haven't been to Nicholson Pavilion in a while, it's going to be very different when we get done with this renovation. It was originally built in 1959 and will be renovated over the next two years with the support of $62 million from the state. It, it will house our health education programs, but also our Division II athletics and a host of other academic activities. Um, we do things like robotics competitions, pre-COVID, we're gonna get back to that, high school basketball tournaments and our graduation ceremonies there. So this is a fantastic facility that will be built out and will be state of the art. We're also in the design phase for a new North academic complex. We will tear down two old facilities, language and literature and Farrell Hall. Did anybody in this room take classes in language and literature at Farrell? From what I understand, I've not been in Farrell Hall, but in some of the places, the, the, uh, if you drop a pencil, it rolls across the floor. Some of the doors you can't open because the, the buildings have settled. So we're gonna seek construction funding in the next biennium so that we can build the North Ac Academic Complex out. I'd like to highlight in conclusion here, three items that are front and center for us and will be for the next couple of years. One is that we have started to engage in a very collaborative and inclusive process to establish a very forward looking and bold vision and mission for the university. We've reached out to the university community, the local community, alumni, business owners, and we've asked them, what is it that Central should be looking towards in the next 10, 15, 20 years? What is this future that is so bold that the community needs, that Central Washington needs, that the state needs? After that outreach, the committee that we've assembled has drafted five statements. We just did open forums and workshops on those five statements, and the committee is now going to take that feedback and draft a new vision statement that will be shared back to the community with the executive leadership team and with the board of trustees. Out of that work around a new vision and mission, we will develop a strategic plan and that really will drive us forward and propel us forward. Uh, I, I have done 
vision and mission and strategic planning work my entire career. One of the things I've always said to folks is this is not a strategic plan that's going to sit on the shelf that we'll pull down once in a year, check some boxes. This really will help us make decisions. Um, fortunately, most people believe that and they get on board on the front end of it because if they find out afterwards that we're really serious about using our strategic plan, they won't have had input. But we've had a lot of input into this vision and mission process. Most importantly in the short term is to increase our enrollment back to pre-pandemic levels. Actually, in fall 19, we had our largest uh, class, uh, 11,700 students that we've ever had at Central. The pandemic has hurt our enrollment like it has many public comprehensives, and so getting back to that place of high levels of enrollment will be critical. Working with our community college partners to develop more pathways for our transfer students to come in and be successful, but also to recruit our freshman students. We're shifting our admissions practices away from something that is a little bit more transactional to something that is a little bit more relational, which to me makes sense to Central Washington University because we are all about relationships and people. So one of the ways in which many universities recruit students is that they buy names from ACT, SAT, the uh, Education Advisory Board. There's all sorts of places you can buy names of seniors in high schools, and then you bombard them with emails and texts and brochures and you send stuff to their houses. And that can work, but you're not necessarily building a relationship with the students, their families, and the communities. So we're shifting that and really trying to spend time getting to know the communities, the families, and those individual students so that when they come to us, they feel like they're already connected and already a wildcat. That relationship building is backing up into middle schools and will back up into elementary schools. We want to make certain that we are building relationships with those families and communities all along the way so that they feel like they're connected. Um, I'll also say that we know that the pandemic has affected the, uh, the ability for students to pay for college. And so we're working very hard on many different efforts to improve our financial aid. And then last, we're working on a branding initiative for Central Washington University. Uh, we've hired a company and they've gone out and asked lots of really interesting questions to lots of different groups of folks. And then they've been listening to try and discern what is the heart and soul of Central Washington University. They'll be coming back and sharing that with us very soon and that'll help us with our brand message. My sense is that having a clearly defined brand that the entire university embraces and understands and knows about, like having a focused vision and mission statement, will build a stronger sense of community for us, which will allow us be, to be better partners with the communities around us. It'll help us tell our story better so that we don't have to be so humble all the time. We'll have clarity and impact in that storytelling. It'll drive marketing strategies to increase our status across the state and beyond, and will become a focal point for those recruitment efforts. As you can tell from all of these initiatives, we're working very strategically to connect our work, to know who we are, to tell our story with integrity and impact. And as a result, we want to take the university to the next level. We do great things. How can we serve more students? How can we help more students succeed in the journeys that they're on with their lives. Now, I can't say much that has been positive about the pandemic. We've been through some hard times for the last two years. We're standing here maskless today. What a great gift that is. Let's remember that gift. Whatever comes next, we will get back to this place of normalcy. What I will say that we learned and that was beneficial at the university is that we can pivot on a dime if we need to. We didn't know that. We went from a campus that taught about 10% of our classes online to teaching almost everything online and doing it well. That was something that if you had asked us two weeks before the pandemic, could you do this? We would have said, oh my gosh, that would be impossible, but we did it. How will we continue to adapt and change to whatever it is that the needs are that we discern how will we continue to do the, that kind of adaptation and change to make certain that we are successful and the communities we work with are successful? We are going to spend time finding ways to recruit more students and help them be successful, but also to provide the financial aid they need to make it through the university all the way out the other end with less debt than they have now. That will be one of my goals is to drive down student debt. 
We do know that this work will not be easy. We also know, that, however, that it'll be exciting and very satisfying. Uh, one of the things I love to do is to uh, spend time with students. And as much time as I can get with students, I spend time with students. But my favorite time to spend with students is when they first come in to the university as freshmen, and then also when they graduate and walk across that stage and I get to shake their hands. When I see their faces, when they walk across that stage and then meet their families afterwards, I, re I am reminded of what we do and why we do it. This is not just about getting students jobs. This is about the human beings that they are becoming, and we are a part of that journey. And it is an honor and a delight to do that work. We make a difference in their lives and in their families' lives and in the communities that we are a part of. And your partnership is critical to our success. So thank you all so much for welcoming me here today. Thank you so much for everything that you do in partnership with Central Washington, and thank you for listening. Questions? Dave said I could take whichever questions I wanted to, but I didn't have to answer all of them. <laughs> questions? Fantastic question. So let me just say this. When I, when I ha have the opportunity to interact with um, student tours that are happening on our campus for prospective students, um, I always talk to them about the wealth of opportunities we have for higher education in the state. And I tell them that I'm glad they're here to do a tour, but they need to find the right place for them. The right place, the right fit. Every student has a different context. Every student has a different journey. So some students, many students, may be place bound and really need to stay in the community they are for the first two years that they go to that school. It is more affordable and our community colleges do such an excellent job. The question I have been asking on campus and will keep asking is how do we develop those pathways so that students are more clearly connected and engaged from high school through a community college all the way to graduating at Central or some other place. It really is a, a personal question that students need to make. And what we need to make certain that we're doing is partner, partnering with all educational institutions, K-12, community college, and, and higher education. Um, when I talk about the importance of higher education, I know that all boats will rise if we can all talk about the importance of this journey that our students are on. Um, our success rate of our transfer students is very high. I think about 87% of our students who come to us as transfer students stay with us and graduate. That's really high. That's much higher than freshmen. You would expect that because they've already gotten an associate's degree. So it's very high. Yes? Uh, two questions. First one is, will the new ag program that you guys have actually make it to the high school at all? Uh, in terms of the courses that are, for instance, our running start or college and the high school students take, so most of those classes that our students take when they're in the high schools are really fulfilling general education, not the major. And this is really about the major. So these are upper level courses you take when you're a junior or senior. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So the answer is kind of no, because they have, to, they have the opportunity to broaden their knowledge in general education before they focus specifically on the agriculture. I don't know the answer to that question. That's such a good question. I'll, I'll have to ask our AD that question. I know that we have great partnerships and relationships and several of our athletes are, are from this area. So I do know that, but I don't know how much we focus on that. Most of our students that we recruit on our athletics teams are from the state of Washington. That young lady is from Zilla. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right, Samantha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Samantha Bowman is from Zilla. Anthony. I 
I don't know about a PhD. Uh, PhDs require an enormous investment. Uh, one of the programs I would like to bring back is an EDD, a doctorate in education. We should own that in the state of Washington. Uh, we are in the, in the center part of the state. We should be training superintendents, principals. Uh, so I do expect and hope that we are able to add an EDD at some point. In terms of graduate programs as a whole, we need to think about the vision that we would have for our graduate programs and the relationship that those graduate programs would have with a predominantly undergraduate institution. There is such an important role for graduate programs at a public comprehensive university. We need to figure out what that is. We need to figure out how to invest in that and meet the needs of uh, especially employers. Uh, I do firmly believe that one of the things that's going to continue to happen over the next 10 to 20 years is that the bachelor's degree is going to become like the high school degree became. And the next thing that people are going to be asking for is that next level of either certification post baccalaureate or graduate program. And so I think we need to be thinking about that and how we meet those needs. Yeah, thanks. You know, one of the things I have been talking a lot about is the way in which we should uh, pay less attention to um, what some individuals talk about as student deficits or um, uh, uh, the skills and abilities students don't have and talk about institutional readiness. How are we ready for those students? And so, yes, we actually have before the legislature, if the governor signs it, some funding that we will use for mentoring programs, onboarding programs, and transition programs for our students coming out of the high schools into Central. Uh, we also have been talking with our faculty in, in, in our curriculum in our first year about how we can make certain that those students get the scaffolding they need to be successful. We can't lower our expectations and lower our rigor. What we can do is provide the scaffolding to help them climb to the places we need them to go. Yeah, so 42% of our students uh, come from a variety of backgrounds, traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. So that's a very strong uh, percentage of our students. About half of our students are first generation, about a third are Pell eligible, another third are close to that. We do a fairly good job with the programming that happens in student affairs, providing opportunities for those students to um, connect with others and feel welcomed. We need to do a better job across the entire campus and in our curriculum and our pedagogy to develop equity um, in, in the work that we're doing and create that sense of belonging for our students. So we still have a ways to go. Our uh, African-American students, African-American males, are the students who we lose at the highest rate at the end of the first year. Uh, we actually do fairly well with our Hispanic and Latinx students, but we lose them at a higher rate than our uh, majority students. So there's a lot of work for us to do in that capacity to make certain that we are going to that next level. Interestingly enough, as we did our vision and mission work, we, uh, we got a lot of feedback from folks on the drafts that we had. And what we're doing is, is sorting through that to see what were the concepts, the words, the phrases, the ideas that, that got elevated to the highest that will tell us, here's what we need to be thinking about for our vision. And I've been very clear with the campus that a vision uh, is not something that we're already doing. A vision is over the horizon. It's a place where we need to go. And the number one term was to create a culture of belonging for all of our students. We have work to do there. That's a vision, it's not where we are now. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, transformative learning experiences, those were at the top of what it is that we do at Central and can take to that next level. We have a lot of work to do. I'm excited to do that work. Um, at my last institution, we were able to bring the retention rate of our traditionally underrepresented students all, um, up to the level that all of our students had, and it was through some of these programs. Um, thank you all so much. I think I'm getting bumped from the podium. <laughs>